Well, that was fun. Uh, that was fun. I thought the guys played with incredible spirit. I thought they played with a few smiles on their faces, and uh, I thought we were much more connected out there from the beginning on both ends of the floor. And uh, went into it with a pretty simple game plan of what we wanted to do. And, you know, not quite this simple, but basically, in essence, we wanted to share the ball, which we did a poor job of on Wednesday night. We had to get back to that. We had to fly around on defense. We had to really make sure we were connected on the defensive end of the floor. I thought we did a good job of that for the most part, especially to start. And, you know, the biggest thing is in the last six games, we haven't had a game over 32% from three. And we've got really, really good shooters. And we had to make sure that, you know, you, just because you shoot poorly in a game, that doesn't mean it has to carry over into the next game. And we had to go out there and shoot with belief and conviction and not pass up shots like we did the other night early in offense that were good looks and really step into them with some belief. And uh, I thought we did that. I thought that first possession of the game really set the tone. The ball movement was incredible, the very first possession. And, uh, and then we got a couple stops, got out and ran, and uh, the ball movement was great today. You know, it's been key for us all year. I mean, it's just, it's it's what we do. And we don't have a lot of isolation players. We don't have a lot of, we're never going to be the biggest team out there. We're never going to be necessarily, um, you know, the most athletic team out there, even though we will be the fastest at times. And we can be the most skilled. And so we've got to utilize that. And we got to make sure that the ball doesn't stick. And that's something we've worked on all summer, trying to play what we call zero seconds basketball. You know, just shoot it, drive it, move it. Make your decisions early. Make that decision quickly. Don't let that ball die and don't let your feet stick. And we've just gotten a little bit away from that. And, and I think the, the, the pressure from not making some shots from the perimeter has given us a little bit more of a weighted approach to offense. And we're just, we just haven't played with this, the sense of freedom that I thought we had out there tonight. And we just worked on it a lot the last two days and um, just trying to get back to who we are. Nobody's hit the red button, you know. <laughs> Didn't want to come back and panic. Just, you know, let's let's focus this thing and uh, figure out what we got to do to correct it. In some of your uh, big wins this year, uh, you didn't necessarily start like you did today. Kind of, kind of, was that, would you say, your best start of the year? That was definitely one of them. That was definitely one of them. I thought it felt a little bit like Asheville. Um, you know, I thought I thought we've had a couple starts like that. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's, again, we're a little bit more systematic. You know, we're not – long and press and run around to where we can just force some early turnovers and pound the ball inside. So sometimes because because we are a little bit more process driven on both ends of the floor, uh, you know, it's not our style doesn't necessarily tend to bear out to some, you know, 10-0, 13-0 run. But to start the game like that tonight, after some of the adversity that this team's dealt with, I think that's a credit to our leadership. And I think that's a credit to the courage and, and really just the guts of this team. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know we've been we we've been slower to take it out, and again going back to who we are, and, and it's an emphasis point in the last few days. If they press us, just get it out quick. Whoever <laughs> I find, I just told him I said closest guy, get it out, throw it in, you know, and and I feel like that's what a lot of people have tried to do is to slow us down, and and even Western Carolina came out tonight in the same one two two that Greensboro showed us. And we changed up our break to, to be a little bit more aggressive and spaced it out a little bit more. And I thought that was effective. And uh, they ended up having – they basically pulled the press off, which I thought was a credit to our tempo and to our ball movement. But, um, yeah, that's – again, sometimes when, when a team goes through adversity, you, you, you want to um, – you want to sit there and talk about all the things you don't do well. And I think that can be very distracting. I think what can happen is you focus all on what's bad, okay, um, not that the media has anything to do with that, but I'm I'm kidding. But I think that's human nature, right? When you go through when you go through tough times, you f you focus on what's bad. And what we've tried to do the last two days is figure out. So what are our strengths? Like let's look at this. Let's look at this. And what are our strengths? And let's get back to them. And tempo, ball movement, and uh, making sure that we're trying to bring fatigue through the game through our speed. I think that's something that we have to be able to do. Yeah, so 
I'm going to tell you this because it's good for the fans and it's a good story. By no means, before I tell it, am I taking any credit for that because that's all to Devin Sibley. But I, I was the primary recruiter for Devin. I was also his position coach the last three years. And one of the things I miss the most about being an assistant is, is being able to be on the floor and do individual workouts with guys. And you get – it's like a – individuals to me was almost like – I don't know if you want to use the word intimate, but it's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity – to where you're working on their game, but it also is just a connection there. There's just a feel. There's just some conversation there. And I was coming back on the bus Wednesday night, and I watched the film, and I saw a team that had great intent. I saw a team that flew around. I saw a team that was really trying to guard. We go in the locker room up to, and on film, we're trying so hard to defend and to fly around. There was no question of effort. We just had a huge burden on us offensively for whatever reason. And so I decided there that I was going to – I was going to go back to assistant for a couple of days. And um, I've taken Devin the last two days and have done a 30 minute individual with him each day. And, you know, it's been more about the conversation in those moments more so than the technique. But we've had a good hour on the court, he and I, and just reminding him, this is who you are, man. This is what you do. And, and these are the shots you make. And, and let's simplify this. And I think it was healthy for both of us. And um, he and I are really close. And, and Devin, Devin sometimes can be, get misperceived a little bit just because he looks like he's so burdened out there and he looks like the game's just so hard to him and he's so frustrated. He's a great human being. And um, I've, tried to, I've tried to really just pull the pressure off of him. And I knew it this morning. I saw, the, I saw him hit about everything he threw up there yesterday for 30 minutes. Um, and that gave me a pretty good feeling going home last night. And then in shoot around today, I, I could tell he was, he was going to have a good day. It is. I mean, you, you got to, you know, you want your best players being their best players. You know, that help, that definitely helps you win. But uh, I tell you, I tell you who else. I thought Daniel had a phenomenal day, especially, you know, in, in that in that run. I thought he was just really aggressive. And we did some things to open the floor for him. And, um, you know, it's it's we are a team, but it's always good when the individuals of that team are playing. They're playing connected. They're playing for each other. But they're also in their individual moments playing good ball. But I think like. For instance, on, a clay, on Clay's and one, okay, in transition, that was a quick outlet from Devin, right? And, and that's, that's Devin trusting that, hey, one dribble, get the ball out of your hand, which here lately we've just been pounding it. And it's much harder to guard the advance than it is the dribble. And I think Devin had a great day, but he, he also bought into being more relaxed and playing inside a team concept. And then when he got opportunities to attack, he took advantage of them. And uh, he always – I mean, it's just – it looks so easy for him at times when he starts hitting those perimeter shots, and I thought that was that was the Devin Sibley we've been waiting on. Um, you know, baseball, there's always talk about the pitcher going through the lineup the second time. You're going through your conference lineup the second time around here over the last next few weeks. Is there any advantage, disadvantage that you see? Or what, what's your approach, I guess, going into it? Yeah, this, the second time is always different than the first just because the first – you're breaking down a lot of opponents' film, and you're breaking down five games or five previous games, and then maybe another non-conference game or two of a similar style that you play. The the second time around, you're, you're much more fixated on your first game and the adjustments off of that game, and you'll still watch, you know, the previous games, but it's going to be more about what you do well, what you do poorly, what adjustments are you going to do here, what adjustments could they potentially do, and you're going to put your plan together heavily based on that. And, um, you know, team, teams change how they play. You'd be amazed, you know, new wrinkles, um, new sets, new, new, new lineups sometimes, you know. So there's usually when you play them, it's never the same game, you know. And um, I remember this particular series last year. I mean, we won this game this game here by a lot last year and then we went up to Cullowee and it was a knockdown drag out you know I mean it's just it's just like I told the team today every every game stands on its own two feet every single game what you did in the previous game never has any implication on what you're going to do in the current game and so we'll just we'll just keep going through it and uh, now you got a good feel the guys have seen it you know they've defended it a little bit and uh, it might make your prep quote unquote easier but it's still the time element of what we do to get ready is still the same. Two 
Yeah, he did. He did. I'm sure I got a lot of Paladin fans driving home, you know, telling uh, telling everybody, you know, what's this guy been doing, keeping him on the bench. And, you know, they're right. They're right. I've, uh, you know, if I critique myself, I've probably done a poor job of, of making sure, reminding myself that he's a freshman. And what I've learned about Clay is Clay's a perfectionist. And he – I had a friend that was in town that had an interview on campus this week um, – that had to be at the library on a certain day to meet with somebody. And he walked in at eight, eight something in the morning and Clay's in there in the library, doesn't have class till 9.30. He's a very driven, he's a very prepared, he's a very calculated person. And because of the perfectionist in him, you know, he's made some freshman mistakes. And I've got to do a better job as a coach at coaching him and making sure I allow him to play through those and to keep his spirit up. And um, so I thought he was phenomenal today. I thought he really ran the floor. I thought he got out in transition. I thought he rebounded the ball well. And I think it's just something that we can continue to build on because he's going to be a very, very good player here. And I think he's got a lot of versatility to him. Even when you were 4-0 um, at the sub-time, and, uh, John Davis didn't have, was all that hot to start the – but he's really come on really well. He really has. I mean, I, I guess – what since the ETSU game, I would say he's he's really played with a lot of confidence. He's played with a lot of swagger, and that's really important for us at the point. I think he really, I think that just gets him in a flow where he can really orchestrate our offense. And um, you know, just proud of his senior leadership, what he's doing. Six for eight today, eight today, four for six from three. You know, after shoot around today, he stayed in there for 15, 20 more minutes. Wouldn't leave to go eat his food until he made five in a row. And that's just the type of person he is, type of player he is, and somebody that just never gets discouraged, just keeps trying to get better. And uh, that's why he's had the career he's had here. What about Beans is dumb? I'll say this. If that doesn't find its way on SportsCenter, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. So I don't know what we have to do on our end. But uh, as soon as I meet with my staff, I'm going to figure it out because – that was incredible, and uh, I know Sports Center might not take into context, but maybe we should, maybe maybe we should help him with that. But that was uh, that was incredible, and you know, let me let me say this as I close. If if I am closing, Jeff Beans, people have no idea how important he is to this program, and people have no idea behind the scenes what he's done to help this team and to help them when people don't see and the cameras aren't on and the, the ball's not in the air. His leadership this week has been phenomenal. And we miss that in sports a lot of times. We miss that, that we don't get, y'all don't get to be in film rooms and meeting rooms and, and practice enough to where you can see that. But what he did this week individually and the way he led this team with somebody that maybe not having a huge prominent role, it was incredible. And I, and I, wish, I wish people could see it. But this program has a lot of – we're indebted to him in a lot of different ways. I mean, he's been phenomenal in his time here, and he doesn't get the production on the court, so people don't write about him as much. But I tell you this, in 10 years, people are going to know who Jeff Beans is. He's going to have an unbelievable future. And I uh, just appreciate what he's done. Uh, this team's dealt with a lot of adversity here lately, and um, it's, it's been neat to see and to convince these players that that's a life lesson as well, you know, that usually – the adversity is not what defeats you, it's the response to that adversity. And I was really pleased with seeing these guys come through that and getting their head up and getting their shoulders back and saying, hey, let's go get back to who we are and let's march forward. And I appreciate what he did and his, and his involvement with that.